Greene County Historical Society is preparing a new exhibit. And the Pittsburgh Pirates are introducing new concessions at PNC Park. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us on Live at Five. I'm Mitch Ross. And I'm Anthony Kahn. The Greene County Historical Society is preparing an exhibit to display its growth over the past 95 years. What was once just a few articles has turned into hundreds of artifacts and historic documents. The Historical Society is requesting speakers that are familiar with their history for the exhibit. The Green County Historical Society currently has over 150 members. The exhibit will be held from April 18th until August 10th. Opening day admission is free. Popcorn, peanuts, and Cracker Jacks. Sure, those are the ballpark staples. But once again, the Pirates are rolling out some new, more elaborate menu items for fans at PNC Park. With the regular season about to get underway, Aramark unveiled its new menu this week. Headlining the new choices is Rivertown Brewing Hall of Fame Club Bacon Cheeseburger, topped with pulled pork, jalapeno, bacon, and more. Other new items include a gluten-free burrito, as well as a new Cuban pretzel dog, topped with ham, pulled pork, Swiss cheese, Dijon mustard, and pickles on a pretzel hoagie roll. You can find all those choices and more this year at PNC Park. So come ready to eat for the Pirates' home opener on April 13th. A local mayor has been charged with theft involving a handgun. South Connellsville Mayor Peter M. Cassini has been accused of theft after allegedly taking one of the police department's guns without approval. Cassini waived the charge Tuesday, so his next step is to negotiate a plea with the state attorney general. Cassini's lawyer says that his client made an honest mistake and is looking to put this matter behind him. Cassini has been mayor since 1989. Pittsburgh is changing the way it names public property as it considers pitting a former mayor's name to a $2.3 million soccer facility. City Council voted unanimously Tuesday to reestablish a commission on naming public properties and require final approval from two-thirds of council. The long dormant commission will be cut from 11 members to three top officials, the Public Works, Parks and Recreation, and Planning Directors. The changes come amid a debate over naming an artificial turf soccer field at Riverview Park in the city's north side section, after former mayor Luke Ravenstall. Councilwoman Darlene Harris supports naming the field after the ex-mayor. She's been keeping a $2,100 Ravenstall field plaque, ordered by his, a member of his administration, in her office pending the vote. Coming up next, an Indiana governor is defending the law he enacted last week and a New York woman is being charged with murder for the death of her child. Stay tuned. The inherent right to work is one of the elemental privileges of a free people. Endowed, as our nation is, with abundant physical resources, and inspired as it should be to make those resources and opportunities available for the enjoyment of all, we approach re-employment with the real hope of finding a better answer than we have now. Donate to Goodwill, where your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community. Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Indiana Governor Mike Pence vowed to fix a controversial law he signed last week. But the Republican stands by the intent of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act accusing the media of mischaracterizing it as a law condoning discrimination. Stacy Cohen reports. We will fix this and we will move forward. Please. Indiana Governor Mike Pence insists his state does not want a new law to be used for discrimination. Critics of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act say that's what will happen when it goes into effect in July. But state Republicans insist it resembles many laws in other states aimed at protecting religious freedom. After a week of controversy and criticism, Governor Pence called for clarity in the law. I'd like to see on my desk before the end of this week legislation uh, that is uh, added to the Religious 
Freedom Restoration Act in Indiana that makes it clear that this law does not give businesses a right to deny services to anyone. But Pence did not back off his support for the law. He insists the firestorm is due to misinformation. We've got a perception problem here because some people have a different view. The timing just happens to coincide with the start of the NCAA Final Four in Indianapolis. The NCAA is one of many businesses that have condemned the new law, even threatening to move future events from Indiana. So did the governor's actions satisfy his critics? One state lawmaker says no. We need to move boldly and make a bold statement that Indiana does not allow discrimination against any person. Pence has presidential aspirations, but with condemnations from major corporations and a major tournament days away, it remains to be seen if he has called the right play. In Washington, I'm Stacy Cohan reporting. A New York woman has been charged with second-degree murder in the death of her one-year-old son. The charges against Letitia Fisher came a day after she was found with her unconscious child in the bathroom of a restaurant. She reportedly told the worker who found her that she put her son to sleep. Janelle Burrow has the latest. Tears falling down her face, her hands in handcuffs, accused of taking the life of the very person she gave life to. Police escorted Letitia Fisher from the Midtown South Precinct Station House Tuesday morning after questioning the 35-year-old mother for hours overnight. Why would you do something like this? Now charging her with the murder of her own son. He's an adorable little boy. I don't understand what you know goes through people's minds sometimes. One-year-old Gabriel Ortiz was found unresponsive in Fisher's lap Monday afternoon. Police say just before 2.30, the mother locked herself and the toddler in the bathroom of this five-borough burger restaurant on 6th Avenue and refused to come out, forcing restaurant employees to use a key to open the door. I hear a little commotion in the corner, get up, see boys sitting there, like kind of unresponsive looking. Um, staff is talking about how this woman's in the bathroom and how she won't come out. She's locked herself in. Inside, they found one-year-old Gabriel sitting on his mother's lap, unconscious. Sources say Fisher told restaurant staffers, I put my hand over his mouth to put him to sleep, and the devil made me do it. Gabriel died before emergency crews could get him to a hospital. The stroller his mother used to push him in among the items taken from the burger restaurant as evidence as prosecutors build a case against her. Anytime I've seen her around, you know, she was happy pushing a baby with the father and everything. And I mean, I guess you just never know what goes on. An Air Canada jet came off the runway during a hard landing at Halifax Stanfield International Airport early Sunday. The flight was traveling from Toronto. All of the people on board were able to get off the plane. Air Canada reports two dozen people were taken to the hospital for observation and treatment of minor injuries. No major injuries have been reported. The aircraft, an Airbus A320, was damaged in the incident. Heavy snow was reported at the time of the landing, but it is not clear if that played in a, ro a role in the accident. A Florida high school student is recovering after being stabbed on school grounds. Authorities say the incident occurred earlier this week at Miami Killian Senior High School in Miami-Dade. School police say the male student was stabbed by a female student in the school's courtyard. The victim was taken to an area hospital and is in stable condition with non-life-threatening injuries. Police say the female student is in custody. The school was on lockdown for about an hour due to the incident. Coming up after the break, a shooting in Mount Oliver and a duplex has been destroyed by a fire. Stay tuned. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. We're called to the scene of a shooting in the Mount Oliver neighborhood. The shooting happened in the 100 block of Amanda Avenue around 3.15 Wednesday morning. A man was shot twice in the stomach. He then was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. A car in the street had a bullet hole in the windshield but there is no word on whether the man was shot inside or outside of the car. The man's name has not been released. 
So far, no arrests have been made. A grindstone duplex has been destroyed by fire. The fire was reported Sunday morning around 11 o'clock. The building housed two families. Only one side of the house can now be repaired. The Grindstone Volunteer Fire Department had help from several other local firefighters. The American Red Cross has been contacted to help the families in need. One woman is dead and two other women were hurt in a three-vehicle accident Tuesday afternoon in Shaler Township. The crash happened around 4.30 p.m. in the 3100 block of Route 8 between Elfinwood Wild Road and Birchfield Road. According to first responders, a black Toyota, which was driven by the victim, apparently crossed from the southbound lanes into the northbound traffic and collided with a Subaru SUV. At that point, a third car was struck as well. The Allegheny County Medical Examiner's Office identified the woman killed in the crash as 72-year-old Janice Manuel of Allison Park. The other two drivers injured are not considered life-threatening. There's no word yet on what caused the crash but Allegheny County Police are investigating. After a Uniontown woman's car rims went missing, police jumped on the call. Edward Andrew Tatch of Hopwood was arrested and later confessed stealing the rims from the woman's home. Tatch has been charged with burglary, conspiracy to commit burglary, theft and receiving stolen property. This isn't his first offense, however. He was caught on surveillance footage stealing a dirt bike from a storage unit last week. Coming up next, a Nashville artist performed on campus, and the student senate votes have been tallied. All that and more after the break. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait and move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. This new dad is picturing a tree house in the sky, but, but he's, he's ignoring the instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I hope mom knows what to do. See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. The Student Activities Board brought a country artist all the way from Nashville, Tennessee to perform at the wing night held in the Benham Dining Hall. The dining hall was filled with students waiting in line to get their free wings. Austin Moody, the visiting artist, performed a variety of songs, including originals, as well as covers of popular country songs. Check out this clip. The results are in. Student Senate held its voting on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of last week for its new executive board members and informed the results to its members on Friday via email. All six positions were up for re-election and there has been a complete overhaul of board members as none from this year will be returning to their positions next year. The new president-elect, Michael Merton, is currently a sophomore senator and will take over his new position in the fall of 2015. Other positions include Darion May as Academic Vice President, current Senator Ryan Schwartfeger as Secretary, and Social Vice President Andrew Giuliani, and Treasurer Jessica Sassaman. While most students were in their beds early Thursday morning, more than 20 Waynesburg students came out to help and give back to the community. Produce to People is a monthly event sponsored by the Pittsburgh Food Banks. They give out fresh produce and other whole ingredients to people in need in various regions of western Pennsylvania. The Waynesburg University Department of Communication PRSSA chapter played a big role in this month's food distribution as they hope to spread the word about it. The next Produce to People will be held on April 23rd and students are encouraged to go out and help the community. Coming up next, Sneaky Anschutz has your business report. We'll be right back. 
A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent? One in 260,000. The odds of this born racer having 157 career top 10 finishes in NASCAR? One in 125 billion. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? One in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I'm NASCAR driver Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 68 children is diagnosed with autism. That's about a 30% increase in two years. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. I'm Nika Anschutz with your business report. This week in business news, Amazon is offering a new in-home service. Google has condensed their popular Chromebook. A survey released says that Americans aren't saving enough money and an ex-JetBlue pilot is suing the popular airline company. But first, Ford is bringing back the Lincoln Continental after a several year hiatus. The auto company unveiled a prototype of the newly designed luxury car ahead of the New York Auto Show. CNN's Peter Valdes de Pina has a look. The Lincoln Continental, the long, luxurious Kennedy era cruiser, is coming back. Ford's luxury division unveiled the Continental concept car in its natural home, New York City. It'll be coming out as a real production car next year. As you walk up to this car, it'll greet you with a light show. But the Continental's not about flash. It's understated elegance for people who want to show off their taste, not their cash. That's not to say there won't be some cash involved here. The price will be similar to Mercedes and BMW's biggest cars. Loaded up with options, those cars can easily be in the six figures. Speaking of options, the Continental has a fully reclining back seat, shearling carpet, and even a champagne cooler. A tablet unfolds out of the armrest. And don't forget, this car will bear the name Continental. That's a badge with some serious history. Let's hope Lincoln's latest can live up to it. Amazon wants to make ordering everyday necessities from its website as easy as clicking a button. Starting Tuesday, it's offering Amazon Prime members a free new shopping device called Dash. A Dash is a small Wi-Fi button for different items that you hang in your house. When you are ready to buy an item like detergent, you just click the button and the product order goes straight to your Amazon shopping cart. Several brand name products already have their own Dash buttons, including Bounty Paper Towels, Clorox Disinfecting Wipes, Gatorade, and Kraft Mac and Cheese. Non-Prime subscribers will eventually be able to sign up for the device as well. No word on how much it was, it's going to cost them yet. Move over laptops and tablets. Google is using a different device to mobilize its computers. Google has crammed an entire Chromebook onto a stick. Sticks are usually used as plug and play inexpensive video streaming devices such as the popular Amazon Fire Stick or Roku. But Google says with its Chrome bit you can have the computer in the palm of your hand. According to the media company, the Chrome bit will be able to connect to any monitor or TV using an HDMI port. It can connect to other devices using Bluetooth. The Chrome bit will have 2 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage. Google has not given the exact price for the device, but it says that it will cost less than $100. 
A former JetBlue pilot who scared passengers by yelling about terrorists and bombs during a flight is suing the airline company for nearly $15 million. Clayton Osborne says JetBlue should have kept him from flying after he showed signs of a mental illness. In the 2012 incident, he had to be locked out of the cockpit and the co-pilot co made an emergency landing. A judge found him not guilty of criminal charges by reason of insanity. JetBlue tells the Wall Street Journal it can't discuss the case, but says that the crew followed several proper safety procedures. Osmond's lawsuit was filed several days after the German wings crash. A new survey reveals many Americans aren't doing a good job when it comes to saving their income. The bank rate survey says roughly half of Amer all Americans save 5% or less of their incomes. That includes 18% who aren't saving one dime. Bank rate's chief financial analyst says that you should try and save 15% of your income for retirement savings, emergency funds, and other factors. The survey says that about one in seven people are currently saving more than 15%. And that's all for business. Coming up next, Michael Doomer will have your sports report. Stay tuned. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F-A-S-T. Fast. Both the Waynesburg University softball and baseball teams were locked in PAC battles this week, while the women's lacrosse team squared up against a newly minted ORLC conference opponent. And two new athletes of the week are crowned. For Channel 14 Sports, I'm Michael Doomer. The Waynesburg University baseball team took the diamond Monday against the Geneva Golden Tornadoes and were able to split the doubleheader action by a score of 10 to nothing and 8 to 7 with a win and loss respectively. In game one, the Yellow Jackets did the bulk of the damage in the top of the third inning as they sent 14 batters to the plate and scored nine runs in the frame. Senior left fielder Ben Shorthouse connected on a two-run single before sophomore first baseman Jonathan Koletsky slapped a two-run double during the breakout inning. Koletsky also added a run-scoring single in the seventh to close out the game's scoring. The Jackets piled up 10 runs on just seven hits during the victory. They also took advantage of 10 Geneva errors and walks in the inning. In the second game, they were un not as fortunate as sophomore Jacob Meyer got the start on the mound and scattered three runs over ten hits on, on one inning, actually six innings of work. The Waynesburg bullpen gave up five runs without recording an out. The Waynes Waynesburg will look to further their case in the PAC as they take on the Teal Tomcats today. The Waynesburg softball team squared off against the Thomas More Saints and had a long bus ride home from Crestview, Kentucky, as they dropped both games by a score of 2-1 and 2-6. Waynesburg got off to a hot start in the first game, as Ashley DeMarkey uh, scored Jess DeRazio to give them a 1-0 lead. But it was not enough, as the Saints used two solo home runs to snag the victory in the seven-inning game. In the second game, however, the Waynesburg pitching faltered, as pitcher Haley Payne gave up four runs in two innings, and the offense was unable to cover, with Ashley DeMarco being the bright spot, which turned in a 2-4 performance with an RBI. The team will be back in action when they take on Geneva this afternoon. The Waynesburg lacrosse team took a trip down the highway to take on the Washington Jefferson Presence in a match of ORLC members and overall rivals. Waynesburg, unfortunately, was unable to match the double-digit scoring output by the Presidents and fell 16-7. to 7. 
leading the Yellow Jackets was attacker junior Michaela Vidas, who turned in a three-goal performance and was stellar on face-offs. Also chipping in goals was Helly Bachman and Kelly Mihal, who had three goals and one goal respectively. The lacrosse team will be back in action on Saturday when they take on Hanover College. Game is set for 12 p.m. And we have the distinct honor of sitting down with Miss Vidosh to recap her excellent season thus far. I think as a whole, we just really connected and um, there were a lot of good passes. There was a lot of good things all around. And I don't personally like to talk about myself and brag because it is a team sport. But that, that has never happened to me before. I never even played attack until I came to school here. I played defense in high school. And to be able to score goals is awesome, and to be able to be out there with my teammates is great. And finally, congratulations goes out to the athletes of the week honor to the athletes of the week, junior junior lacrosse player Michaela Vidosh and pitcher Brian Resnick. Michaela not only had not only had athletes of the week honors, but led the Waynesburg University Yellow Jacket lacrosse team in multiple offensive categories this week, but made school history during the Yellow Jackets 23-18 win over Franciscan University last Wednesday. Vidosh scored a program high and Ohio River Lacrosse Conference record 10 goals and also added an assist for a Waynesburg University record of 11 total points against the Barons. Resnick, however, put together a second straight outing in which he didn't allow a run over seven innings of work. Against Geneva on Friday, Resnick worked the first seven innings of 11-0 win during a nine-inning game. The junior right-hander allowed just two singles, one in infield hit and two walks. While striking out eight batters, Resnick is now 3-1 on the year and is currently riding a 14.2 innings shutout streak. Once again, congratulations to both Ryan and Michaela on their Athletes of the Week honors. I'm Michael Doomer and that's sports. Up next, Ryan Schwartzfeger will have your weather report. Welcome to the Live 5 Weather Center with me, Ryan Schwertfeger. As we enter the month of April, if you're looking for some nice conditions for your Easter holiday, have no fear for the most part. Right now, we're enjoying a warming trend with current temperatures in the mid-60s, and that'll continue into Friday, but we can expect some rain and falling temperatures starting off around 60, but then dropping to the mid to upper 30s by nightfall. And as those temperatures fall during the overnight hours from Friday into Saturday, there is the chance of a snow shower, but there shouldn't be any significant accumulation as the temperature is gonna go up to 47 degrees on Saturday. But after Saturday for Easter, it's gonna be mostly sunny with temperatures just reaching 60. So it'll be nice if you're hunting for some Easter eggs or if you're going to church in the morning. Now looking into Monday, there will be slightly warmer conditions with partly cloudy skies and a high of 63 degrees. Tuesday is gonna be partly cloudy with a high in the mid 60s. And it looks like we're finally gonna see the temperatures warming up. Winter is still trying to show its ugly face around here, but it looks like it's spring is finally gonna wing that. Yeah, it looks like it certainly is, Ryan. Well, thank you for the good news from you and the Live at Five Weather Center. That's thank for, you, sir. That's for sure. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you for joining us on Channel 14 News. Tune in next week and every week for more Live at Five. Have a great weekend and happy Easter.